Greetings, YouTube. A couple of years ago, I put together a couple of survival kits for my wife and I's car. It was a complete surprise. I just finished the kit, never told her. It was a complete secret. It required me months of keeping things in the closet. Literally, I hid things in the car at my father's house until the kit was complete, and then I presented it to her. She thought it was a very geeky, very um, much me, and very sweet. But in the process, it got me interested in the topic of survival, um, in the concept that there are people who do this as a hobby, and the people who find themselves in real survival situations. And of course, it didn't hurt that um, that was when Les Stroud, a survivor man, was becoming popular. And I love Les Stroud. I think he's a great guy, and uh, he's uh, he's very interesting. So I picked up a number of books on the topic. Um, 98.6 Degrees, Keeping Your Ass Alive is the one that inspired my uh, list of items to go in a survival kit. It's an excellent book. It's a very good base book to start with. Um, it's not very big. It's not a hard read. It's got some nice, uh, fairly entertaining illustrations. And overall, I recommend it. Um, but one book I picked up, and it kind of sat on my shelf for a bit, was this one. Deep Survival um, by Lawrence Gonzalez and the sub title is Who Lives, Who Dies, and Why. And Mr. Gonzalez talks about the mechanisms that people fall into when they're trying to survive a situation that frequently they have not planned for. Some of these situations were out of the blue um, shipwrecks. Some of these were camping uh, events that went wrong, uh, things like that. And he gives examples, real-world examples, of people who have been in these situations and what they did, uh, what they should have done, what they got right, what they got wrong, those that made it, and those that didn't. And I found it fascinating. He talks about one woman who got on a ship and her instinct said, don't get on this ship, and she got on the ship, and the people were not well trained, they were not well organized, and they ended up wrecking their boat and four of them ended up in a life boat and only two of them made it from the lifeboat and a number have already died um, in the shipwreck itself and just the concept of these four people in this lifeboat and one of them just looked at, at, at the rest of them and said I've got a sandwich in my car and got out of his lifeboat and swam away and was promptly eaten by sharks. I mean, it was astounding. The person had just gone over the edge. And the last two in that kept each other alive. If it hadn't been for each other, they wouldn't have made it. Having that other person there for them is what kept them going. He gives another example of someone who got lost in New York State. It's not hard to do. Lots of New York State is looks just like New England. Now, if you're stuck someplace for three days, after that point, if you haven't been found, you've now entered a self-rescue situation. You've got to find your way out. And hopefully you've had time to think about this in that three-day period. This person didn't do that. He sat in one spot waiting to be found for 53 days. You can walk across the entire state of New York in less time than that. You can probably do it in four or five days. He died. He starved to death. He decided he oh he decided died of a disease that that was related to, to starvation. He just died because he didn't realize that you had to self rescue after a certain point. And the one thing this book gave me, which had in many ways nothing to do with my life because I've never been in a survival situation was the fact that your amygdala a part of your brain functions in its best interest which is frequently not your best interest because your amygdala can remember safety comfort food water warmth and because it remembers these things, it drives you forward because it convinces you 
that if you keep moving, you will get these things. Even though you could be moving in the dia diametrically opposite direction you need to go, pushing yourself further and further into the wilderness, farther and farther away from rescue. Because you've got this little part of your brain which is pushing you and pushing you, convincing you that over the next hill, over the in, the in the next clearing, will be what you need to survive. And of course, it just drives you to death. The thing is, you don't have a memory of dying. There's no gland in your brain that says, well, if you take this risk, this will be the result. But you've got a memory of warmth and food and safety and so that part of your brain keeps pushing you but if you can overcome that if you can realize that there's a mechanism going on inside your head that you don't want to be in charge you can take control you can survive and this book taught me that it taught me that there are mechanisms inside my head that I don't have control of that aren't doing things in my best interest. And in my case, it's my depression. It's the patterns of behavior that have kept me going or been my companion for decades. But those patterns aren't helping me anymore. Those patterns are pushing me in directions that are bad, that are away from growth and enlightenment and health. So I've had to learn that there are times when I cannot listen to myself because those patterns are trying to drag me down into that depression trying to push me into a place that's familiar and comfortable and deadly so this book taught me something that had nothing to do with survival at least the, the kind of survival the author was talking about it has everything about to do about the survival that I need to make it through the day sometimes this book was a profound find for me. I can't tell you how important this book was. I've kept this book. It's going to stay in my shelf. I may reread it someday. I may just keep it along around as a talisman so I can look over at it, see it on the shelf, and never forget that sometimes there are things going on in my head that I don't want to be in charge, that I dictate ultimately what I do and how I do it that I can survive, I can prosper, I can live.